Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Project Bench, and it's Dan here as always, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a custom kit bash using an air slide covered hopper. Um, the model I have on the desk here is a Scale Trains. This is one of the rivet counter air slides, so these are pretty pretty popular. Uh, the next step up in detailed models would be the Tangent cars, but I'm not going to be using a Tangent for this because I'm going to be doing a little bit of chopping. And basically what I want to make with this is this. This is a rebuilt air slide covered hopper. NS had built a fleet of these cars in the 2000s using retired air slides. And they basically took the floors out, modified the floor, added a new floor to it. Uh, so they basically removed the under bays, the pressure bays. And then they removed the roof and added these extensions to basically make it a high side gondola. And these are used in C&D trash service and they can be seen all through the east here in Ohio, pretty much everywhere out this way. And I wanted to build three of these to start. In the end, I want to try to build quite a few of these, but as you can see, at first glance, it doesn't look crazy. Uh, some people might not even realize this is an old hopper car, but it's pretty interesting what they can do with retired cars. They don't always just scrap them once they're done with them. They try to repurpose them if they can because it does save money compared to having to completely buy new cars, you know, and then finance them, pay them off. This is something they can do where they have an entire fleet of cars already invested and they pay the little extra money to basically just refurbish them. It is a little bit cheaper in the long run and that's why a lot of companies have rebuilt these. You can also see these kinds of cars like uh, the Colveyor gondolas have been rebuilt into these. Um, the Thrall, bathtub gondolas, uh, all kinds of cars like that have been converted. So. Uh, it's just kind of an in, another interesting take in the CND industry, but it's another car I've been wanting to make for years, and I tried to build these cars originally with Walther's air slides, and the only benefit that the Walther's cars have is that the floors are easily removable, so they can just pop out, so that saves a lot of time. Um, but the roofs are all molded in, so you have to cut those out. Uh, so the reason I've chosen a Scale Trains model here is not only is, does it have a good little bit of detail to start with, um, but it also has a lot of usable details. Like I said, I'm going to be removing some details, but it still has a lot of stuff that we can use. Uh, we're going to have to add more grab irons and do some things like that, but essentially what we're going to be doing with this build to model what we need to is we're going to remove the floor and we're going to remove the roof to start. And then later on we're going to remove the end details, which are all like one molded piece, and then you have the separate grab irons, so you just basically would lift this off and that should slide off. Uh, and then there's some other parts that we'll remove so they don't get damaged through the build process. But basically, uh, it's not the hardest build, but it's also not the easiest. And for a build like this, what you're going to need is to have a Dremel with a cutting bit. And then you're also going to need maybe um, like a rotary bit for grinding uh, to remove a little bit of material to try to save some time. Um, it's going to be pretty rough, but we can do it. It's just going to take a little bit of time. And I'm not going to show every single process, this is going to be kind of a run through, but basically where I'm going to start with this is a strip down. And so what that consists of is me removing some basic details, and I'm going to be starting with the floor. So I'm going to be removing these trucks, the couplers, the coupler lift bars, these stirrups. I'm going to remove as much of this under bay detailing as possible just to expose the entire bay basically and I want to try to save all this brake rigging and detailing if I can or at least what I can to save. Uh, some of the wiring and things like that is obviously going to get damaged and we're not going to be able to save it but we we're going to basically have to redo the brake rigging for these cars anyway so it's not a huge deal. I just want to try to salvage some of these little usable parts that I can use for scrap or I can use for other hopper car projects or anything like that. I try to generally save these detail parts so uh, we're going to go ahead and start there. I'll just start stripping down the top here. Uh, Similarly, you could do that for the roof. Let's say you wanted to build some hoppers and you wanted the roof walk supports, for example. Uh, you wanted this photo etch piece, these hatches. You could, of course, pull these off too. Um, the roof is actually removable on the scale trains cars, but the problem is they're glued in so well that trying to actually remove this in one piece is next to impossible. You're just going to end up tearing the plastic and breaking it. Uh, so that's the downside with these scale trains models, or I mean any model in general, but uh, we'll do it. We'll get it done. Uh, we just got to be careful, so I'll go ahead and start stripping the uh, underbody down. Okay, I pretty much have the strip down complete. Here you can see the roof has the walk uh, walkway and the supports removed. The underbody has all the details removed, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Dremel and make a couple different cuts in here to remove these bays. And I need to get it as flat as possible because I need to go in and add a floor to this because the real cars have had a floor added to this section and the ends as well, and then they have ribs uh, for support added. So I need to make 
all those cuts and then I need to insert a piece of styrene in there to fill that in and then add ribs to it. So that's why we got to get this as flat as possible. It's going to be a little bit tricky but we can remove all that. Uh, the main beam of the car we're going to preserve. We don't uh, need to change that too much. I just removed the details from it like the brake rigging and that's all safely stashed there for later reuse. Uh, and then on the ends I removed the bracing, ladders, everything like that because we're going to have to redo that and add some ribbing. Uh, as for the roof, the roof is going to have to basically be sawed out inwards. We can't just go in there and hack it from the ends or try to remove this lip here because we need to preserve that top section there uh, just underneath the roof because that's all stock on the rebuild cars and we need to save that. So basically we're going to go in and cut it from the inside and then work the rest of the material off with a uh, basically a flat chisel blade and we're going to get under there and we're going to be able to lift that top piece off. Now there's a good chance because it's glued down you're going to remove a little bit of material from the base of the car that you need to save. Uh, but if that's the case, we can go back and do a little bit of styrene grafting, a little bit of putty work, and that'll blend that in. And then, of course, we'll have to uh, possibly remove the graphics. Uh, they're they're pretty thin. Uh, the Mopac logo is definitely going to have to come off, but um, smaller graphics and things might get painted over. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and do the cutting next, and then I'll show you guys what that looks like after I'm done with that. All right, well, look on the bright side. we got all the heavy cutting done, and we're pretty much ready to actually start building up. And as you can see, we've gotten the floor mostly cut down. It's important that you have this entire top rib exposed here. Notice that you can see that. There's nothing protruding in the way. There's a little bit of flashing material that we're going to have to remove. Also, we've got to remove these little lips here. You'll just take a chisel and cut those off. They're on both sides. Uh, so we're going to have to remove that. But I've also trimmed down a little bit here and here. Because there's some protruding material. Um, you can go in and clean this up a little bit more with a grinder if you want. I got it to where I wanted it to be, uh, but you can clean this up as much as you want, obviously. The roof was a little bit better. That came up pretty easy. You can see on this side I got it pretty clean after I cut it out and lifted it up. This side I did take a little bit of material. Here you can see that. Uh, but again, that's easy to fix. All you got to do, once we add that little uh, lip of material, we can just go back and fill that in and blend that, so that's fine. As for the ends, there's still that angled portion, the slope portion for the roof. We're going to basically level that off from pillar to pillar, both sides, with the knife. And we're just going to carefully cut that so that it's flush and flat. And then we'll be able to now start adding material. And it's up to you where you want to start. You can either start with the floor or you can start by building up with the roof. But I would recommend getting a floor done first, getting all that out of the way, having the new floor installed. That way you can work from the ground up. And it's a little bit easier that way, so that's how I'm going to actually do this. Here is a floor I cut to size from 040 inch styrene. You can see it's glued in place. Uh, it's pretty snug, and you can see it's nice. It's butted up right against that support there, so it's flush, and it meets the uh, side of the car pretty nicely. So on the opposite side. Uh, so that's basically the extent of the floor I'm going to be doing. The next part is going to be adding the reinforcing strips and then some ribs that are going to uh, go across. Uh, for the reinforcing bit, I'm using, let's see, Evergreen 292, angle 080 inch there. And then I also have rib material. And basically when you get styrene material, you want to try to match it up with the sizes that are already on the car. And in this case, you can see I'm trying to match these rib sections. So I have a piece of styrene rod here I'm going to be using. And then I have some other strip back here that I'll use to make the ribs. So that's going to be the next step. So I'm going to start laying in ribbing, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, uh, we got all the ribs on, and they're all secured. Just a little shut here. So if you look, you can see how I did the construction. I used a little bit of 080 inch piece here. And this reinforces the floor a little bit, gives a little bit more rigidity. And then I have the reinforced ribs here. And notice that they meet the existing ribs on the car. That's prototypical. That's just how they did it in real life. And then at the base of each of these, there is another little piece of material. And I'm not going to try to model it exactly like how they did it. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little cap on each of these little supports. And it's going to join the two pieces together. It's going to be a very simple little piece of styrene. Uh, if I get a piece over here, it's going to be similar to this. How these are cut, and it's just going to basically, well, I guess I can demonstrate. 
I'm just going to overlay. Oh, that didn't really work. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me here. It basically overlay and overlap over that new rib onto the new one. It's like a little bracket. And then they repeated it as well on the top cord to join the new ribs with the old. Uh, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. I'm basically going to have to take some 05 inch styrene or possibly some 010 inch. It might be a better uh, 010 inch because the brackets in real life are pretty thick. I'll just cut a whole bunch of these out, little strips of them, and then I'll glue these on each one of these ribs. And then the other thing we got to do is actually add a rib to the side here because on the air slides this middle panel is exposed, it's open. On the prototype cars they added an additional rib so I'm going to take more of this material and then lay a rib across. I'm just going to cut it to be the exact same length as one of these and that'll take care of the sides for the most part. The only other thing we'd have to do on the underbody is add the brake rigging. But we're going to wait to do that until the final stages. Now moving on to the top of the car you can see the weight is exposed and all that and I'm going to keep be uh, keeping that because the car does have a nice little bit of weight to it uh, which is great and you can see how I've prepared the top cord we were able to preserve most of that fortunately uh, on the one side there is a little bit of damage as you can see we're just going to fill that little gap in with some putty and that'll take care of that for us now on the ends what I had to do is I had to level out the roof because it had a beveled angle to it a slope angle just like a, the top of a roof uh, it's angled if you remember with the air slides so I leveled that off with an exacto blade and then I used some L bracket type styrene material right here this kind of styrene where it has it's like basically a bracket almost like a hinge and I cut strips of that for the long length and then the short length and that takes care of that little lip because the prototype cars have an additional reinforcing strip that runs all the way around the car and then they basically took and made top cords and welded them to this. So that's how I'm going to do that. I'm pretty much trying to copy how they did it from the real cars onto the model. Again the uh, ends are completely bare. What I'm going to have to do is remove these little nubs for the grab iron. I'm going to add three new ribs to the front there and another little piece of uh, styrene strip to the top and of course we'll go back and add ladders. So it's coming along pretty well and obviously it's a little bit of work uh, but for the most part we got all the demolition out of the way we're ready to actually build and construct and this is always the fun part because you get to see the fruits of your labor kind of come to you know come into fruition and you really get to see the things kind of progress. We are going to have to add some grab irons and things like that. So we're going to have to do all that, which is annoying. But it needs to be done. So we'll be going through and doing all that. And then we'll start building the top cord. So for the side, I added the new rib that's installed. On the ends, I added the three ribs there. You can see I've added those. And that turned out pretty good. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, took a little bit of modification, but we got it done. We still got to add the little bracing sections to the bottom, cover those up. And then on the top, we have to add the ribs uh, for our new top extensions. And I just finished scratch building these. I just used 040 inch styrene, and I just basically rough measured uh, to get a approximate size uh, and then I transferred my measurement over to styrene and started cutting out these long strips uh, two of them for the sides two for the ends and I just do the ends last and then do the sides first because that's going to generally be where you want to start with so as you can see they're firmly in place they're nice and solid they're not going anywhere that's always the fun part because obviously you get to start seeing the model come to life uh, it starts taking shape uh, so now what we need to do is add the ribbing. You can see I've already done the ribbing on the ends, the two bracing pieces. And what I'm using is this stuff here, 90531, plastruct. See I'm doing that. Uh, so I'm going to cut out each individual little rib for the sides to match what's on the car there. And then I'm going to have to add more little bracing pieces to these ribs here, just like how i got to do it on the bottom, so I'll take care of that. All right, well, all the ribs are on, and I have the little braces installed, the little white pieces there that joins the uh, ribs together. i got to make a bracket for the bottom there, 
uh, because they made a piece of uh, metal that they fabricated and it fits around that middle brace there. I still got to make that, but uh, the ribs are pretty much done and prepped. And now, right now, you're probably thinking, why the hell do I have a clamp? Well, notice that they have the internal bracing. And it's not prototypical, but the reason I put these braces in is so I can have the load. But they also serve another purpose, and it's to replicate the severe side damage that these cars generally have uh, from their years of service. They get warped pretty good, they get beat up, and you end up seeing this damage on the side of the car, but it makes your gondolas look way more authentic, especially high side gondolas, because a lot of them have this kind of damage. And a lot of times you actually will see this top cord bent inwards like that. Um, as another example, to let you guys in, I'm building a couple more of these and I want to show you how I've done this. Uh, this one still needs some more bracing installed, but you can see I've already started to warp the sides of this one. And then if you look at this one, notice that this one is bulged out like that, which is pretty cool. So, a couple different ways of doing that with the bracing but it's pretty effective and then I'll add more bracing in here to fit the load for each of these cars uh, anyways the kind of bracket I'm talking about I gotta make these right there for this one so that'll be the next thing I gotta do and uh, my phone is going off but uh, we're just gonna keep trucking along here so while I got the night tonight I want to try to knock out the brake rigging um, it's just a little tedious and it usually takes a couple hours uh, especially if you're doing a few cars so I'm just gonna try to knock it all out in one and I tried to replicate what I have here so far on these other two cars as a reference point to make this model and you can go as detailed as you want with a brake rigging I generally try to do the basic rigging setup to where it looks like everything is where it's supposed to be and you have the wiring under there for the most part you know where it looks good uh, if I take it and show you guys what this looks like you can see when you actually look at the car underneath here, you can see the piping is there uh, for the most part you can see there's still some basic piping I gotta do uh, but I don't make it too crazy I just try to have all the essential details anyway uh, but again you can take it as much as you want so I just basically use styrene to make little brackets to actually hang the brake rigging and then for almost all of my wiring needs I use 020 inch phosphor bronze now I use a little bit of 010 inch maybe some 015 uh, for thicker pipes maybe all the way up to 030 something like that and generally there will be a size of wire you can use for any of this kind of rigging uh, and generally speaking most of the time the pipes are usually pretty fine uh, the piping that's going to be on the main air reservoirs and things like that usually will be a little bit thicker especially on the more modern cars I've noticed they're more like a hose uh, so you can kind of just use a pro uh, basically prototype reference to try to get an idea and I have multiple pictures I'm using here to get an idea you can see there's two sets of rigging on this end and then only one on the uh, opposite side and you can see the large air tank there the valve over here and then there's also a little uh, discharge outlet here that runs all the way underneath. It's kind of hard to see in this photo, but I know it's there because I've been up again against tons of these cars over the years to have seen it. So I'll make those later. But just start with the basic rigging first and then start doing all of your plumbing. And honestly, once you get going, it's pretty fun. I'll tell you that. All the brake rigging is complete for the most part, or at least as much as I want to take it. I may go back and add some things if I notice anything, but for the most part, it's very uh, basic. But it gives the look of what needs to be under there, and that's what matters to me. All three cars are prepped, and you can see uh, they look pretty good. I will have to do some modification. I, I made them a little too long, so they're going to interfere with the truck. By the way, I'm not going to be using these if I can help it. I'm going to try to find some different trucks that I can put under here, uh, because these are a little bit uh, different style than what was basically replaced under the car. So I'm going to have to find different trucks for these things. But uh Anyways, this is the one we're still on, and it's coming along pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it, so we'll keep trucking along. Um, I may go back and add some more stuff if I find more photos of anything, but uh, at the moment, this is as good as I want to get it. 
Alright, so there's the brake rigging there. The next thing I worked on was the end detail, because since we had to take all the ladders off, we had to replace them. I ended up using Titchy Ladder, and this is the stock material you can get in big sprues, and you usually get quite a few sets in a sprue, for example, something like this. Uh, and it's enough to do quite a few cars, and if you need to lengthen or shorten these, all you got to do is cut them off the sprue, and you can very easily splice them together. I've used this material for all of my gondola builds, and it works really well for this uh, purpose. And I, really, that's the reason they make this material. So, these are the stock pieces, and as you can see, we can't use them not only because they're fused with the ribs, which are inaccurate for the project, but I just can't use them anyways. Uh, the only other thing that's uh, kind of is a downside is this is more of the flush riveted ladder type compared to what's on the air slide which is this really unique type where it's basically bracing and then they took and uh, attached grab irons to it like this so the grab irons are actually raised off the surface unlike what's on there but unfortunately these are a lot harder to make you could make them uh, but I really don't want to have to buy a hundred grab irons make my own little you know, sprues and then glue them to the car. That's just insane. What do you think? I'm crazy. Anyways, they look uh, they look right. They work for the project. Once it's painted, no one's gonna really care or notice. I also put the grab iron on there. Now, while we're talking about grab irons, and because we're still working here, the next thing we need to tackle on the sides is actually adding some grab irons. These ones on the ends are fine. It's on this side. Since these cars are modified for high side service, they have a tendency to put the ladder is all the way at the end and they go all the way to the top so let me pull up the uh, prototype photo here so you guys can take a look as you can see these are the original three and then they just basically added all these up top and they're just attached those so those are the new ones so this is a little bit more tricky in the sense that you gotta get grab irons you have to have drill bits or a poker in this case, I use a sharp dental pick, and it just pokes right through the plastic. It works really well for all my grab irons. I use it for my locomotives, my rail cars, everything. Uh, so that's what I use. And then as for grab irons, I have a nice little supply of Titchy. I think these are the brass wire grab irons, but you can use the uh, steel wire. Whatever wire material you want to use, just use that. Uh, all you got to do with these is just cut and trim the stem down to a shorter length, and then all basically mark all your holes out and then poke them in. Uh, if it makes it a little bit easier for you guys, make a little template. So what this is, is a match where this is the exact length of each of the holes on the existing grab irons and basically you can use this piece here and then take it up here and as you can see you get a rough idea of where you need to make little marks to drill your grab iron holes. And then of course repeat it for the end strip there and as a finished example here's the first side I did there's the bottom grab irons the originals there's the new ones go all the way to the top so I'm going to be doing this two times on each car because I have three of these I'm only going to do this one for tonight because I'm pretty tired and it's pretty late I'll knock that out finish that up and then we'll move on to something else hooray So it's been a few days since I started working on these again. Uh, I took a little break. I uh, ended up working on some cars. I wanted to do some graffiti on so I was working on some uh, Autorax and things like that. These are the newer Walters. They came out with a pretty cool run with these newer scheme. So I started prepping these. Just a little something to kind of work on in between, get some more cars done because I had those kind of sitting around. So I got two of those. I figured I'd work on those while I was working on these too. But all the grab irons are on. There's that one. And there's our car. The uh, 969. But uh, in the next step, all these cars are going to lose these identities. Because uh, I'm going to be taking off all the graphics. Honestly, in hindsight, it probably would have been better if I had taken and removed all of these before I did any work. Uh, and I definitely recommend if you watch this video just as a run through and if you want to do a car like this make sure you strip the lettering off I just jumped right into the project uh, and got into it too quick and that's just something that happens I actually might be able to paint over 
these graphics too though because the scale trains printing is way thinner than the Atherin RTR. The Atherin RTR stuff is a lot thicker. Uh, the scale trains lettering, especially the fine graphics, you can paint over those from experience that I found and usually it'll cover up pretty well. Um, so that's kind of an option I might consider. Uh, you'll obviously notice that the couple of lift bars and air hoses are not on the coupler lids. Uh, excuse me. Also not on. I'm going to install these at least before I paint them. And I'm going to put those on, but I'm not going to put the stirrups any of the details like that on. I'm going to keep completely leave those off until I'm done with the car. Anymore, I found that trying to work with a car like this extensively, hand painting, graffiti, weathering, building it up, a lot of times those really fine details like those stirrups, for example, they just get damaged and there's no point in trying to glue them back on right now because they just get destroyed. Uh, it's just best to wait to reinstall these parts until the absolute last and then just touch up the weathering on them and you're good to go. Uh, that's my other big piece of advice for small details like this. Just wait until your main model is done, then install them. So that's going to be my little philosophy here. So I'm going to not do anything with the existing detail in the car. These don't have to be award winning paint jobs either. They, uh, they're very basic white paint jobs. Uh, they used to be gray but they've obviously faded. And the next thing I got to do is uh, get some custom artwork done for them because I need CDEX decals and possibly the number font too so that's kind of be the next big hurdle here I gotta get those developed spend a little money on that uh, so in the meantime I'll get the graphics scraped off if I need to I'll get these primed and painted and then I'm probably gonna set them aside for the next couple weeks until I can get decals so but for the most part we're done the build is finished we have what we need to done and I know I've said it a hundred times now, but if there's anything else you want to add to these, if you want to go back and add some more piping or things like that, just refer to your photos, choose what else you might want to install at this point. But for my particular case, I'm satisfied with my build and I'm ready to get these done. So I'm going to move on. By the time you see these next, they're going to be completely white and you're no longer going to see these Mopac decals. Alright guys, so the cars are pretty much finished in terms of painting and building. Uh, they're finished up, they look pretty good, and the paint jobs came out pretty nice. Um, kind of rough here and there, as you can see it's not perfect, but remember these things, they're going to be rusted up pretty good. Uh, all kinds of weathering work, graffiti work will come, custom decals I gotta get, and then of course I'll finish up the underbody by re-adding the stirrups, coupler lift bars, air hoses, everything like that uh, but that's gonna have to come at a later time uh, for the bulk portion of this video it's pretty much gonna have to wrap up here because it's already come out kinda late kinda long too so what I'm gonna do is pretty much um, well I guess the problem is I'm kind of in a waiting pattern right now because I need to get decals made for these the CDEX patches in particular and then I might get some specific data made for these and possibly the number sets as well. Well, I'll, I kind of have to see. I might have some decals to be able to pull it off, um, but it kind of depends. I have other data pieces too I'll probably use for these, so I'm going to end up probably end up using quite a bit of different sets of data for these cars. And I'll let you guys see a video maybe down the road. Uh, once I get these actually decaled, we might be able to come back and possibly have a weathering video on these. Uh, but for now, that's going to wrap up the video. And again, you guys can stay tuned for more on these down the road. And I'll keep you guys posted. So uh, thank you for following me on this one. If you guys want to try to take on something like this, hopefully this video helps you out. Uh, and gives you a little bit of inspiration to get out there try some new things. Uh, and like I said, all these building materials, all these parts and things are relatively simple. It's just committing yourself to taking the time to do things, doing things the right way, making things look nice. And that's really the key to any scratch building or kit bashing project like this one. So again, thank you for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned for more. Take care.